This is the third video in my first Growth Bordeaux series. If you've enjoyed this series and you'd like me to make a similar video for either Lafitte or Latour or both, please let me know in the comments below. But for today, and by popular demand, I'm focusing on Chateau Margaux. In this video, I'll briefly discuss Chateau Margaux's illustrious history, then I'll briefly discuss what makes Chateau Margaux so special. I will then identify and discuss each of the four wines that Chateau Margaux produces. So it's not just the top wine, there's actually four wines three of which cost much less than the top wine, but still offer excellent quality. Lastly, I'll discuss my buying and collecting strategies for Chateau Margaux, so please be sure to stick around for that. Chateau Margaux is one of only four producers to achieve first growth status in the original 1855 classification of Bordeaux. Chateau Margaux has about 80 hectares of vineyards that it uses for red wine production. Notably, this is about the same as what they had way back in 1700. So it's certainly a very classic and traditional producer, and not one that's expanded their reach through purchasing lots of new vineyards that they didn't own previously. One of the things I like most about Margaux is that it's one of the first producers to emphasize selection. And by that I mean that they use a strict selection of fruit, and only the top fruit goes into the top wine. So way back in 1906, they came out with the first second wine, the Pavillon Rouge. And so what they did is they identified the, the best fruit and put that into the top wine, the Grand Vin, and then the rest went into the second wine. Certainly this is something that's commonplace today, but Margot has taken it more seriously than most and was also one of the first to do it. Margot's cellars were completely reconstructed. That was completed in 2015. Interestingly enough, that was the 200th anniversary of the original construction of the cellars. So certainly that renovation was long overdue. 2015 is also a special vintage for Margot because that's arguably the best wine that they have ever produced. Margot uses organic farming methods, and in fact, in 2017, their wine was the product of 100% organically farmed fruit. They're also doing some experiments with biodynamic farming. Specifically, they have one plot of Cabernet Sauvignon that is being farmed biodynamically. Another thing I really appreciate about Margot is that they take counterfeits seriously. Way back in 1989, they began to use laser etching on the bottle, and about 10 years ago, they started to use the proof tag system. So certainly given the price of their wines, you definitely don't want to be stuck buying a fake one. So what is it that makes Margot so special? Well, it's certainly known by its elegance and finesse, and justifiably so. But despite its elegance, it's not a light-bodied wine, Rather, it is full-bodied. It's just extremely harmonious and elegant. It can have seductive violet aromatics that can haunt you for days after you've enjoyed it. For the past 30 years, Margot has been one of the most consistent producers of Bordeaux, and they rarely have a down vintage. I still recall a bottle of 1990 Margot that was absolutely exceptional. While this is one I've enjoyed on several occasions, and it's always outstanding, on one night, the bottle was particularly magical, and it actually outclassed a number of top first-growth Bordeaux including some from 1982. So when Margot was on, and it's on quite often, it can be absolutely stunning. The Margot vineyards are planted to 75% Cabernet Sauvignon, 20% Merlot, 3% Petit Verdot, and 2% Cabernet Franc. They definitely have a higher percentage of Cabernet Sauvignon than Chateau Palmer, which is very close by. The average age of the vines used for Chateau Margot are about 35 years old, but they do have some exceptionally old Cabernet Sauvignon vines that are about 80 years old, which is certainly very impressive. They also have about 11 hectares of vineyards that they use for white wine that are planted to Sauvignon Blanc. What wines are made by first growth Bordeaux producer Chateau Margaux? Well, there's four of them. The one you're probably most familiar with is the top wine, which is just called simply Chateau Margaux. This is the wine that's been probably the greatest beneficiary of their strict selection. In the early 1980s, specifically, they used to produce about 20,000 cases of this wine. Today, however, they're only producing 12,000 cases of this wine. And much of the fruit that used to go into the top wine now goes into the Pavillon Rouge and also the third wine. So certainly the quality of those wines has been greatly improved as well. The second red wine produced by Chateau Margaux is the Pavignon Rouge. As mentioned, about one-third of the fruit goes into the top wine, and then the next 30% goes into Pavillon Rouge. This is a particularly compelling value today because much of the fruit that used to go into the top wine is now used to produce Pavillon Rouge. Yet despite that, there's a significant price difference. The top wine for 2018, for example, sold for about $600 on release, 
whereas the Pavillon Rouge sold for about $250. And the quality is so high that it rivals and usually surpasses many of the classified growth Bordeaux. 2018 and 2015 were particularly outstanding. One quick pro tip for you when you're selecting a second wine from a Bordeaux producer, what you want to look for is a Bordeaux producer that has a top wine that has an extremely strict selection. And so many of the Bordeaux producers might use about half their fruit for the top wine, but to the extent you can find one that uses only about 30 or 40 percent for the top wine, then the second wine will be particularly outstanding. So definitely be sure to implement that strategy. The third red wine produced by Chateau Margaux is Margaux du Margaux. This is a wine that had been produced but sold off from probably 1997 through 2008. In 2009, however, the quality of the fruit was so outstanding that Margaux thought it would be a shame to sell it off, and so they bottled and sold this wine, which has been produced ever since. This one may be harder to locate, but it's definitely definitely worth seeking out if you can locate it. Chateau Margaux also produces a white wine. The white wine is called Pavillon Blanc du Margaux. This wine is 100% Sauvignon Blanc. It ages for about seven to eight months in French oak, about one third of which is new, and they produce about 2,500 cases of it each vintage. And before I get into my buying strategy, if you're enjoying this video, please be sure to smash that like button so it gets distributed to more viewers. And please do subscribe to my channel if you enjoy my videos. That really does help me a great deal. And now for my buying strategy for First Growth Bordeaux producer Chateau Margaux. As with many top Bordeaux, you can often find Chateau Margaux in the secondary market with 20 to 25 years of age on it for less than current releases. This is oftentimes a good idea for Margaux because it's definitely not one that you want to drink too young. It becomes a special wine with bottle age, and so you definitely want to wait at least 15 years on it, preferably even more than that. So please do not open those 2015s or 2018 yet. As for some of my favorite vintages of Chateau Margaux, certainly if you're talking about past vintages, you have to talk about 1982, 1983, 1990, and 2000. While 1982 is considered to be the legendary vintage in Bordeaux generally, 1983 was actually particularly special in Margaux. Chateau Margaux and also Chateau Palmer made epic 1983 vintages, and in fact, for both of those producers, I have a slight preference for the 1983 compared to their 1982, but I'll gladly enjoy either one of those vintages from either producer. As mentioned earlier, the 1990 was also a magical Margot vintage. That was a 100-point wine and is one that is well worth seeking out. It's drinking extraordinarily well now and is definitely one to buy if you can get your hands on it. The 2000 is another 100-point Margot and also an outstanding wine and one that I highly recommend. The great thing about Margot, however, is that it's been extremely consistent for the past 30 years, so there's really not too many down vintages. You really can't go wrong with buying older vintages. Even vintages such as 1998 and 1999 are extremely enjoyable right now and can be purchased for less than a lot of the current releases, and yet they're ready to drink immediately. For newer vintages, you really can't go wrong with 2009, 2010, and 2015 through 2020. As mentioned, 2015 is arguably the best Margot ever produced, and 2018 is also absolutely incredible. So you definitely can't go wrong with either of those. And since Margot uses such a strict selection, Pavillon Rouge, the second wine, is absolutely one worth buying on a consistent basis as well, particularly if you can find any from 2015 through 2020 or the 2009 or 2010 vintages. You can often buy it for less than half of the top wine, and as mentioned, most of the fruit that goes into Pavillon Rouge was going into the top wine not that long ago. Chateau Margaux is definitely a collectible wine and one that you could buy for investment purposes. If you haven't had Chateau Margaux yet, I highly recommend giving it a try. And if you can't locate the top wine for a price that you can afford, be sure to seek out the second or third wines because they offer exceptional quality for the price as well. And they will also give you a feel for the house style and whether or not you may like the top wine of Margot as well. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to check out my First Growth Bordeaux focus videos on Chateau Aubryon and Chateau Mouchon Rothschild, which are linked in the description below.